Another major area of improvement in the Oracle REST Data Services 3.0 release is in the area of installation. And in particular, uh, there's a new installation wizard that allows you to set up orgs in a standalone environment, which is suitable for development and testing purposes. Um, so the, the wizard makes the installation very quick and easy, and to show that, I'm going to walk you through a installation. So uh, as first step, let's pull up SQL Developer 4.1. So SQL Developer uh, 4.1 is the administrative tool of choice for setting up and administering ORDS 3.0 or greater. So I'm pulling that up now. I'm going to connect to a database, uh, which I... Uh, call the connection PDB Connect. So I'm connected here. Um, now I'm going to pull up the, uh, I'm using the tools menu, I'm going to pull up, uh, going to the REST data services, uh, the installation, and walk you through it. So first, uh, SQL Developer 4.1 contains the latest release of ORDS in it, and that's what it's going to uh, install by default, but you can specify other versions of ORDS if you want to on this screen. The other thing this screen does is allows you to specify your uh, ORDS configuration file. So the, the configuration file I'm using, I've named ORDS 3.0 Quick Brief. Uh, the next thing, next screen allows me to specify the host, the port. I'm installing in a 12C databases database, which supports pluggable databases. So I'm going to be installing in a particular pluggable database that has this service name. So PDB1 dot so on. I next have to create a very important user, ORDS public user. And this is the user that drives ORDS in a runtime environment. So this is the user you can ORDS connects as uh, to the, in the database. Uh, it proxies to the appropriate user, then executes the query or the update or whatever's in the handler for a particular REST request. So that's a very, very key user, but you specify the passwords for that user, password for that user. Click Next. It will be installed, the words will be installed as sys. So I'm giving it a uh, username and password to allow me to log in as sys. So I'm logging in now. Uh, next step is I'll be creating two schemas. The first is called ORDS metadata, which contains, as you might imagine, all the metadata for ORDS, all the tables and views and packages and everything that ORDS runs with. Um, the next user uh, or schema we'll create is for the ORDS public user, as I described before. We're just going to use the default table space and temporary table space for both these. Next screen allows me to set up the PLSQL gateway if I want to do that. I'm not going to show that for this particular demonstration, so I'll unclick that button. Uh, this uh, specifies that I'm creating ORDS to run in a standalone, mo standalone mode, again, which is good for development and testing purposes. But for production, you want to run it within an app server like WebLogic or Tomcat. Um, but for here, we're just going to run standalone standalone mode. Uh, the port we're using is 8666. Uh, if I want to uh, install Application Express, I have a place here where I can specify the location of the Application Express static resources for images and other things. I'm not doing that here, so um, I'm just installing ORD, so I'll leave that uh, blank. The next thing is I'm going to be creating two important users. The first is ORDS admin. Uh, this is the user that administers the production ORDS environment. The second user is called ORDS Dev, and this is the user that is used if you want to define uh, your own modules and services and, and handlers and so on. Um, uh, the other key part of this is uh, I'm going to turn off this thing that requires secure socket layer. We're just going to use HTTPS uh, to make development simpler. So it's all set. That's all I need to do for the installation. I'll let me push finish and, and have that installation start processing. It takes a couple minutes to uh, run. And while we're waiting, let me explain a few things. Um, first, those two users we just created, uh, ORDS admin uh, is the first one. 
So ORDS admin is the user that administers the production ORDS environment. So that user will do things like um, administer the connection pool. So ORDS has its own connection pool that it uses when it runs in environments like uh, WebLogic and Tomcat. But you need to administer that. You need to specify a minimum number of, of connections, for example, and a maximum, and set various timeouts and various other things so that the ORDS admin user does that. Uh, the ORDS admin user also uh, sets up connections to multiple databases. If you want to use ORDS to support multiple databases, uh, the uh, ORDS admin does that. Uh, there's also some advanced security uh, capabilities that the ORDS admin can set up, for example, for doing a virus scanning and other things. Uh, another point I wanted to make is that I'm demoing the ORDS 3.0.1 release. Um, so this contains a couple improvements in installation. One is, is the wizard is, is, is even easier and faster and more straightforward than before. A couple of screens were entirely eliminated, which is a very good thing. Um, also, uh, this release of ORDS allows you to install into a CDB if you're running in a multi-tenant 12C database. And then lastly, I wanted to make a couple points about uh, SQL Developer. I, I mentioned this in, in the beginning, that SQL Developer 4.1 or above is the a tool of choice for administering ORDS 3.0 or above. So uh, uh, SQL Developer will support the new features of ORDS that come out, for example, the installation wizard and also the auto enablement, which I'll be talking about in another quick brief. Um, uh, you can still use uh, Application Express to administer earlier versions of, um, of Oracle REST data services. So while I was talking, the installation completed. Again, it takes a couple minutes to, to do that, but it's now, it's completed, everything is now installed, and we're ready to go. Thanks.